Hi, Jeff Catru from Stratocast, a division of Frost & Sullivan. We're here at IBM Pulse 2011, and Scott Firth of IBM has been kind enough to take a quick minute to talk to us. Scott, first of all, thanks for taking a minute with us. I know it's a busy Glad, week. Glad to be here, Jeff. Um, let me ask you a little bit about one of the major themes, and one of the things with the companies that we talk to in our research is that they're still, in 2011, managing storage and servers separately, which is yeah. kind of a funny thing because they're so interdependent, and yet you have separate management systems at least, and sometimes separate teams managing the two. I wonder if you could talk a little bit about that and some of the implications that has on the companies. You know, as infrastructures have become more complex, that's certainly been the case that the infrastructure teams have evolved so they have separate management of servers and storage. Uh, we, we all wish we could go back 30 years when there was one small group that could manage everything, but unfortunately as complexity grew, that's what's happened. Right. So IBM has developed a series of management offerings, software offerings, for IT infrastructure professionals to use to manage uh, servers and storage. Okay. And recently we have brought these together so that professionals can manage their servers and storage together. It's very important in today's world to be able to do that. So recognizing the complexity that different uh, instances are going to exist of the different resources, but bringing it under the one management, you know, one pane of glass, all of that. Right. That's well, what we like to see. Yeah, well, one thing that we, we've seen with the growth of virtualization, that's actually increased the amount of storage used compared to the amount of servers because now you're storing more and more virtual images uh, in your oh, storage farms. Right, yeah. So what's that caused is the server management guys now have to be aware of their storage capabilities and how storage is being managed because they may need to recall a virtual image on a second's notice. Right. Right, so they need to understand very quickly and completely where the image is being stored mm -hmm. and how to recall it, how to build it, how to roll it out. Or, for example, uh, in certain industries like retailers that need to scale their infrastructure quickly, let's say you need to bring online new web delivery capability because you're doing a price promotion, you want to install quickly install new web delivery images and move them over to your as virtual machines on your server, right? So using a system where you have a single pane of glass and you can see your server resources, your virtual images on your storage resources, you can control everything. You don't have to make phone calls anymore. You can do it very quickly. <laughs> That's a nice thing. So I'm, I'm interested in that because one of the other things I've been talking about with some people here this week is about getting away from that one server to one application kind of mapping. Yeah. And what I hear you saying, which a lot of people probably don't really realize is, let yeah, also get away from the thought process of one server to one storage resource mapping because the great point that you make about the imaging as opposed to, you know, it just doesn't match up that neatly anymore. Yeah, and you know, when we talk to uh, customers about virtualization, they always start and talk about server virtualization. Mm. And many customers I ask, well, have you considered storage virtualization? More <laughs> often than not, they have it. And they can get the same cost benefits virtualizing their storage. And they, they need to be able to control it. And the techniques that they control and manage server virtualization equally apply to storage virtualization. Right, good point. Talk to me a little bit then uh, about specifically about storage control and what IBM is offering, a little bit about that and sort of the different versions that I was interested in because they map into sort of the two different scenarios that we see a lot out in the market. Yes, yeah, so what we've done with our systems director product, working with customers and their feedback and the discussion we've been having about you know eliminating the silos, mm -hmm. they clearly ask for a way to manage everything together. So working with our, our Tivoli team, who has created a great set of storage management capabilities, we've taken some of their offerings now and plugged them in under the covers of Director in a plug-in we call storage control. So it's not the complete Tivoli storage management offering, mm. but it lets customers get started, and frequently it's sufficient for them to be able to manage with a single screen their complete server and storage infrastructure. And then, so from what you're saying, then you have sort of a migration path into the Tivoli if they need the more comprehensive. Yeah, so okay. enterprises that have a, a much yeah. larger infrastructure requirement can then migrate, once again, using a similar capability that they're already used to with storage control, can migrate to Tivoli Storage Productivity Center, or TPC. 
Well, I appreciate it. This sounds a great discussion. And uh, once again, Jeff Katrup from Stratocast, the division of Frost and Sullivan. I've been here with Scott Firth. Thanks a lot for taking a few moments Jeff, with us. Appreciate it. Have a great rest of the week. Thank you. All right.